Center. He has a special called Responsible Child coming out in February. Keep it going for Jay Agbon! Yo, what is up? How y'all doing tonight? This is a suspicious amount of white people in here. Not gonna lie, I'm, not, I'm not seeing this many white people congregated together in Brooklyn since the last Black Lives Matter protest. <laughs> Honestly, this is a lie. <laughs> no, okay. I'm, I'm done making fun of white people, I promise. I, promise. I, I, I do make fun of white people sometimes in my jokes. I'm black, get over it. I, um, I will say, though, I promise, this is my promise to you right here. Right here. You are white, are you, right? I'm loving but <laughs> My mom calls that Sam White, so... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my promise to you. This is my promise to you and all white people in attendance. So I'm not here to pick on white. Some of my best friends are white. <laughs> Or whatever it is racist people say. What I mean is... <laughs> I, uh, I just moved here to New York a couple months ago. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. You've been more supportive than everybody else. <laughs> Usually people are like, you just move here, nigga, move back. You're raising our ass. Honestly, I'm a paid rent. I get it. I get it. My friend called me. She's like, I'm moving up. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like living here in New York. Everyone back home uh, keeps asking me, though, if I've had my New York moment yet. You know what I mean? That, that moment that lets you know, like, oh, you, you live here now. This is New York. And I think I had mine the other day. What happened was I was walking down the street, going to the gym in the morning, and uh, a car pulls up next to me, the window lowers down, and a guy who looked like a backup dancer from a 1998 Eminem music video stuck his head out the window and was like, yo, man. You selling any drugs? <laughs> and I was like, not today. And I kept on walking. And I got about five more steps before I realized I said, not today. <laughs> like, no, I'm not keeping on me, but it's been a busy day at work, buddy. And it's really uh, you know, and I'm from Texas, so the sun boy in me felt bad that I couldn't give him the help that he's already right in the rest So I circled back around, flagged him down, and gave him directions to our local street drug dealers, you know? And he was super grateful. He was like, yo, man, thank you for this. And then as if he thought about it in that moment, he looks around and he's like, by the way, you're not a cop, are you? <laughs> and I was like, no, my nigga, but it's far too late for you to be asking these types of questions. We in the drug game now, man. You gotta get on it, man. I like being here in New York. It's fun. The one thing I don't like about being here in New York is I'm single out here in New York, so I'm on the dating apps. Um, and everyone keeps asking me, is it fun? Is it cool being out in the streets again? And I'm like, no, the streets of New York are filled with trash. It's literally, it's not fun out here. I'm on all of them. I'm on all the little dating apps. I'm on, I'm on Hinge, with, you know, for people who like to pretend they don't, don't like to fuck on the first date. <laughs> I'm on Bumble, I'm on, for women, I'm on Bumble, that's the, that's the, you know what I mean, like, I mean no, you know what I mean, like, if you don't know, that's the one for women uh, to reach out first, and I'm all for that, right, I'll, go feminism, woohoo, here's my problem, is, ladies, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, y'all don't know how to send the first message, it's not your fault, the patriarchy was in charge for too long, but y'all be saying shit like, hey, with a period, listen, I, I, I don't know if you took English one, that's called a decorative statement, okay? According to the rules of English, that's the end of the conversation. I could call that up if I wanted to, you know? I'm on Tinder, you know what I mean, Tinder. I, I'm what I like to call uh, a Tinder warrior, uh, which is a nice way of saying I'm a whore. I, uh, I, I, you know, I, I've been doing well on Tinder, which was nice, because I, I took a little hiatus from Tinder because it hurt my feelings. What I happened was, I was on Tinder, swiping right, trying to find a match, trying to find somebody to love me, as it were, you know? Until one day I got a message back as if I had matched with someone, but it wasn't a match message. What it was was a message that said, hey, we've noticed that the person you swipe right on has been very popular recently. <laughs> They've been receiving a lot of matches. Would you like to swipe up and super like this person so that your potential match stands out amongst all the matches that they have received? Which I thought was a really fucked up way for Tinder to be like, listen, my nigga, we think <laughs> you're a little bit too ugly. <laughs> Even now, like I've been going on on some dates uh, recently with a nice girl. I've been I've been, <laughs> I've been going out on some dates with a nice uh, hiking white, 
And I'm like, <laughs> Here's the thing, she's not, she's not even white. She's uh, Japanese and Jewish. Or as my mom would say, white. And, uh, <laughs> she is a hiker though, she is a hiker. She likes hiking, camping, other white people things. And she's, she's always on, she's like, oh, can we go do that, you know, as a date? And I have to explain to her, I'm black, we don't survive those horror movies. Uh, <laughs> but we, we, there, was a, there was a day actually we did, we took a little day trip uh, and we, we, we drove up into uh, one of the little hiking trails and we did a little day hike. It was a fun time. Uh, I survived to the end of the horror movie. I know you were worried. <laughs> on the way back, we had an incident. What happened was we stopped for gas and uh, I, you know, she went in to pay for the gas because I'm a gentleman. And, uh, <laughs> I, I look out to my left and I see this car whip into the gas station and in the back window of the car, there was a Confederate flag hanging. Now listen, I'm from the South. I grew up in Texas. I've seen Confederate flags my whole life, right? That shit didn't bother me. No, the thing that caused me issue was that the car that the flag was in was a Toyota Prius? No, I'm not here to judge nobody's life decisions, okay? But you can't be an environmentally conscious racist, okay? You gotta pick a struggle. You can't be like, we're gonna save the planet, but only for the whites. What? Absolutely, absolutely not. I'm, uh, I'm of the belief that everyone uh, should have a toxic friend. <laughs> anybody, anybody in here got a toxic friend? Okay. If you're sitting next to someone and, and they didn't move, nigga, you the toxic friend. <laughs> I do, I think everyone should have a toxic friend. Like, not you pointing them out, that's crazy. Okay. She squeezed it like, bitch, it's you, it's you. <laughs> I think toxic friends are great. They're great for the group chat. They're fantastic. They make, they make a robust friend group, right? I think, I believe in having boundaries in all relationships, especially friendships, right? I do, however, think you should have at least one friend that routinely violates those boundaries. Right? Like me, I got, I, I got uh, one of my best friends in the group chat. She's my toxic friend. I love her to death. I, I would murder for this girl, but she's very toxic. The way she's toxic is what she'll do is she'll keep fucking this piece of shit dude and then complaining to us, our group chat, when it goes wrong. And she does it all the time, backslides into this thing so much. And it keeps happening, the cycle keeps happening so much. Once uh, I snapped on her and I was like, why the fuck are you doing this? Why will you keep fucking this dude and not listen to me when I give you advice on what to do? <laughs> and then this girl looked at me, shrugged and said, well, Jay, you know, I got to, you know. <laughs> you know, for the plot. The plot, <laughs> bitch, this plot is a horror movie, okay? <laughs> it has a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Please, put this plot to rest. <laughs> Done. Tired. Okay. All right. We got to land this ship. I got the light. I got to figure out what I'm going to do either. See, this is what happens when you plan out the beginning of, the, of your set, and you don't plan out the end, then you get to a, a high point, everybody's laughing. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to say. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, it's the weekend, it's the weekend today, I'm very glad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of, kind of over my job, they keep asking me to do shit, like my job. <laughs> it's infuriating. I, uh, I'm, I'm the type of person, like, I be watching a lot of YouTube at my job, you know, to look busy, and, uh, <laughs> The thing I've noticed with watching things on YouTube is you gotta be very careful with what you watch on YouTube because the video recommendation algorithm is like very persnickety, right? <laughs> you, uh, you watch one off-color video, all of a sudden your video recommendations are shot to hell. Right? Like me, I don't know what I've been watching recently, but recently all of my recommended videos have been low-budget Christian movie trailers. <laughs> Just like somebody at Google looked at my search history and was like, yeah, nigga, you need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that'll be great. Let's get the hell right.